I'm going to show you how to use the Photoshop app to take five photos of you or someone you know in different positions and put them all together into one cohesive photo like this. So here's what you're going to do. First, you need to open up the Photoshop app. Now with this, you will need an Adobe account. And we're going to start by going Import and Open. Now, if you're one of my students, you are going to want to log in to your Photoshop first. So when it opens up, if it doesn't immediately ask you to log in, I need you to hit that circle on the top right, go down to Account, and make sure you're signed in to your school Google account. You do have access to Photoshop while you are in my class. Okay, once you're signed in, import and open, and you're going to go to wherever you saved those five original photos or however many you're including. And you're gonna start with your very first one. Now, once you have your first photo, I like to go just a couple photos at a time, not overdoing it. So I'm gonna add my second photo on top of this. I'm gonna hit that little plus in photos. I'm gonna add the next photo on top. It'll be the exact same size, so you shouldn't have to resize anything and hit done. We see in our layers on the side, they're both there. Now what we want to do is on this photo on top, remove the background so that way all that's left is you or whoever the person you're trying to leave behind. So to do that, I'm gonna click these three little bars with the circles on the right hand side and go down to where it says remove background. Click that, give it a second, and Photoshop's AI is going to try to remove the background for you. And now we can see in the layers, it is now just black and white, but it's not quite perfect. So we do have to fix it a little. I'm going to hit those three lines to close that out of the way. So this is what we call a clipping mask. So the black and white just means it is covering up the areas that it shows in black and it's showing through the areas that are in white. So you can use the paintbrush and the black and white colors to fix it. So I'm going to zoom in on to, let's start with my feet here. So obviously some of my shoe is missing. So over on your paint brushes, you have colors. We need one set to white and one set to black. Now it's nice if you've never noticed, these two little arrows will just switch your two colors back and forth. So when white is selected, I'll make sure my opacity and hardness is all the way up. It's got a decent size. You see if I draw, it is adding back that photo, the original photo. So we want to think about anything that we want to have in this photo that the AI took out. So for me, it's the rest of my feet. It's the chair. I'm just going to start with these two. Now, as you can see, the lighting is slightly different for me between the two photos. It's because my body in the chair was actually casting a shadow. Now you notice here I did cover up that chair showing through, and it does show through over here as well. Now, right now all I've done is bring back that photo. We want to fix some things. So white brought back the photo. If I switch it to black, it'll remove anything. So you just go back and forth with the black and white. This is so much better than an eraser because you can actually fix your mistakes. So if I took too much, I can shrink the size down on my brush. And I notice right in here, I want to bring back the table from the under photo. So I want to get just the edge of it. Well done. Wrong way. Switch it. There we go. So I want the table of that photo that's underneath to stay there. Now I also like to kind of feather out and blend those edges. See how you can see the edge of where I changed it? I'm going to go to my opacity down to around 50. Same with hardness. I might make my brush a little bigger. And I'm going to draw over those edges. And you see how it's kind of blending it out for us? It's giving a softer edge. You can do that down on the floor too. 
So I might take a couple passes back and forth because it's not all the way solid opacity, so it's a little see-through. But I do this and I kind of blend it out. I find, especially if you have shadows that are slightly different, it's a great way to blend it a little softer. Now you notice here on this chair right in the center, doing that made it fuzzy. That means the two photos didn't exactly line up. So in that case, I'd want to bring my opacity back up, switch it to black, small brush, and I want it just to be on one chair, not two. I don't want to see both at the same time. So I have to find the way to get it back exactly how I want it. I'm going to go with that one instead. So you got to assign which image do you want to use. So like I said, I'm going to go with this one. I'm just kind of smoothing it out. And I'll go back to my opacity and hardness. And I'll feather out those edges just to get it to blend. A little bit bigger brush. Blend it out. I'll move up. Uh, this table and chair up here got a little bit messed up. I'll start by bringing that hardness. Let's see. Am I using the right one? I think I want to switch that. I'm just going to undo what I just did. And go to black. And have it be the photo underneath. So I'm covering up things from this second photo on top. So it takes a little bit of back and forth, playing around with black and white, softening up edges if you need to. Awesome. Now I like to kind of go around the perimeter of my body. Here is okay. I could fix those a little. Pretty small brush though. Oops. Smooth it out. Now my nose got taken off, so I want some white, a little bit bigger size. Bring back my nose. I'm gonna check up, oh, yep, some of my forehead too. A little bit of my hair. Even some of my shoulder. So I personally like to overdo it and bring back too much of the photo with adding the white. Then I'll come back with the black on top to refine the edge. So I found the edges, switch it to black. Or sorry, switch it to white. And go back in, clean them up. It is definitely a slow process. And when you zoom out, you don't notice those little details as much. Ooh, something happened weird there with the colors. Yep. Uh, looks like I, my brush might have smudged a little. Now that's going to happen. You just have to figure out what layer it's on and fix it with either the black or white. Last up, I need to bring back the phone. Wrong color. Switch it. There we go. My phone and fingers. And I think I want some shadow that's casted by me as well. So I'm going to bring it out on the table a little bit. I'll switch back the colors. Bring the size down. And clean that up. Oop, too small. So using a stylus does make this process a little bit easier, but it's not impossible to do with your fingers. Lastly, I want to just smooth on that table. Get those values to kind of mix together a little bit better. There we go. Zoom out. Check to see if anything's missing or if you added any weird marks. And then you just repeat this process for each photo that you do. Now I do suggest that you try to finish your clipping mask on the layer you're on before you move to the next photo. So I can go now to new photo, add it in, It'll be that one. It's the same size, so I'm good there. Now you see it's a solid photo. We need to follow that same process again. The three lines, remove background, Give it a second to load. All right, then double check what's missing. First things first, I notice up here, some spots disappeared. Bring my hardness and opacity back all the way up. 
If it disappears the color, undo it, flip flop them, figure out where it needs to go. And notice my feet disappeared, part of my pants. And then I cast some shadow as well, so I'm going to darken up the table to see more of that and the shadow of my body that gets highlighted on the table. And as you see, I just keep going over and over every layer, going through, changing it to remove background, and painting with the black and white. Let me show you a finished one so you can see how it looks. There it is one here. There we go. You can see how I got all five photos stacked up. Now, if you look at my layers over on the right, only three of them show a clipping mask. That's because when you close out of the photo, Photoshop will just set the mask and you can't adjust it anymore. So you see how the second layer down, I no longer see the mask. If I realize that I needed to fix it, I'd have to go back in, click remove background again, and do all that work all over. This is why I suggest make sure that layer's done before you go to the next photo, because Photoshop will just flatten those layers down and you can't fix them. In order to save your work, you hit the box with the arrow pointing up, quick export, and then you would save your image wherever it needs to go. I hope this video was helpful to combine multiple photos together to one picture. Good luck with your creations.